There's something different about the Rockets that nobody's talking about in the last few games that I've noticed. And I think that this is a trend that if they keep this up, will actually help them win more games than people think they're gonna win. This is something that I feel like we've all been asking for, and it's been slowly but surely actually coming to fruition. And I'm gonna tell you what that is right after this. The Chop Shop store is now open. Stop by the Chop Shop merch store and browse through our catalog of great products that show support for the Houston Rockets and for this channel. If you're a supporter and liker of the videos that we produce, stop over by the store and review some of these great designs and rep your city, rep your team, and rep the Chop Shop. That's the Chop Shop merch store. The link is gonna be in the description of this video. Stop by there, the prices are low, the content is great, and the quality is A1. Keep rocking with the Chop Shop, stop by the merch store, grab you something today. So the key thing that the Rockets are doing right now is being a more balanced team. It's that simple, they're more balanced. And it starts off with the ball handling duties. This has been the biggest change to me in the past few games, especially in these two games that the Rockets have won, um, is that Kevin Porter Jr. is not overly dominating the basketball. And this is coming off of Jalen Green having a nine assist game and a five assist game and a couple other five and four assist game before this. So this is something that has been building up to this. And I feel like it's something that a lot of people aren't talking about in detail. Now we all say, oh yeah, Jalen had this many assists, this many assists, but I'm gonna try to look into some numbers with y'all and we'll go through some of the numbers of their stats and see what is actually happening. So more specifically, we're gonna look at the last five games um, that they've played. Um, and so going back five games, uh, Kevin Porter Jr. still leads the team in passes made, 241 to Jalen's 194. So that's an even distribution of, of passes being made. And in those passes, uh, 30 of those for KPJ were assists and 29 were um, assists for Jalen. So Jalen and Kevin Porter in the last five games, which they've been really playing better, um, are basically dead even as it comes to assist um, in, in those uh, in those games. And if you look at the uh, assist to pass ratio, Jalen Green is at 14.9% to Kevin Porter's 12, meaning that more of his buckets or more of his passes are turning into buckets. So this is something that's, you know, great development for him um, as a guard that's looking to be a superstar in the future. So a frequent play ran by the Rockets is the pick and roll. The pick and roll is, you know, pretty much one of the basic sets that we run in our offense. We're one of the probably top five or six pick and roll teams in the NBA. You know, you guys have talked about this with y'all before. We're not particularly great at the pick and roll, um, but within our team, we can look at how the players relate to each other. So this season, um, we've had you know, probably Lord knows how many pick and roll possessions, but between Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr., they're about dead even. So Kevin Porter's ran 175 pick and rolls to Jalen's 170 pick and rolls, right? And in these pick and roll uh, runnings, Jalen comes out at 0.85 points per possession, which isn't exactly great, but to Kevin Porter's 0.73. So Jalen is a whole 12 uh, points per possession, 0.12 uh, points per possession better than Kevin Porter and running the pick and rolls. In those pick and rolls that they've ran, Jalen has generated 100, 145 points to Kevin Porter's 127. And the team is shooting, when Jalen's running a pick and roll, it's shooting 39% to Kevin Porter's 36. And Jalen ranks in the 50th percentile for pick and roll ball handling, while KPJ ranks in the 24th. This is not to slander Kevin Porter Jr. I love Kevin Porter Jr. But this is to show that the thing that we try to do the most, Jalen is actually better than our point guard at it. So you can do with that information what you make, you know, that's up to you. The thing we try to do the most, Jalen is actually better than Kevin Porter at it. Now, when we talk about isolation play, Kevin Porter is one of the best ISO players on the team uh, besides Alper and Shangun respectively. But when we're talking about perimeter isolation, he's the guy for that. But when it comes to pick and roll ball handling, he is not the best player on the team for that, even though he's our point guard, when our two guard is actually a better pick and roll ball handler than our point guard. So you guys do with that information what you may. That is very impressive for me to see. Another thing that we've you know all kind of seen is that when Kevin Porter isn't the only person that has to make all the decisions on the ball, the team does better, right? 
So when he isn't the one that's having to dictate every single action that we have, the team actually does better. And this is proven out in the last five games. And you can go look at some of those games. A lot of them were competitive games. And, you know, we've won a couple of those games. Um, he hasn't been the most dominant ball player on the team. He's not the one that's making all the decisions. As we just talked about, he's not making all the passes. He's not running all this, all the sets. It's actually been pretty split. And if I look at first, we're going to look at touches. So touches is basically when a player touches the ball, you can get a touch from a pass. You can get a touch from uh, getting a rebound and getting to transition. So anytime you get a touch um, is basically when the ball comes into your hand. A touch ends when you either commit a foul or you're fouled or you have to go to the free throw line or you pass it or you make a bucket or you turn the ball over. So that's a touch. The difference between a touch and um, like what a lot of people use to see how players dominate the ball, which is usage percentage, is that a, a usage percentage is calculated by a, 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 a basically a touch that ends with a shot. So usage looks at how many shots you're taking within the context of the game, while touches just looks at how many times you touch you touch the ball, whether it ends in a shot, foul, turnover, etc. So in touches historically kevin porter has super dominated this for the team meaning he touches the ball obviously he's a point guard usually your point guard get the most touches um but um even in the front court touches um it's been more for him and a front court, court touch is one that occurs after you cross half court in the past five games kpj at 337 touches jalen green at 323 touches so they're pretty much dead split on that and in the front court, Jalen has actually touched the ball more than uh, than Kevin Porter. And, you know, he's generating 0.331 per possession with his touches. Let me say that again. 0.331 points per, per possession per touch. And for Kevin Porter, that's 0.223. So Jalen touching the ball more, scoring more. He's generating more points with the ability to touch the ball, whether it's him bringing the ball up the court or him getting more actions from the team or having the opportunity to do so. And, you know, this is something that I've noticed since last year. The more he touches the ball, his scoring goes up, everything goes up, but his efficiency stays the same. So he's an efficient ball handler. And this is definitely um, an avenue that we can keep improving on. But let me point that out again. In the last five games, Jalen is actually touching the ball as much as kpj and with his efficiency and his ability to score when he's on that translates to wins for the teams uh for that so overall for jalen the main thing that i'm seeing for him is that he is able to play in a position where he gets to dictate a lot of the offense now this doesn't happen at all stretches of the game but he's doing it at a rate that it impacts the winning just a little bit more no knock on KP kpj I feel like he's being misused for what he is, and the numbers say so. He's a good ISO scorer. He's a good catch and shoot um, scorer, right? So this guy's good in isolation. He's good in catch and shoot. That doesn't scream uh, point guard to me, right? That doesn't scream point guard. That screams as an off guard or scoring wing, whatever you want to call it. But I already said I'm not going to be harping on that because because he's such a good isolation player and the offense that we run, he's actually one of the best players to have the ball in his hand because that's what the offense really calls for a lot of isolation um, or pick and roll so the issue with it is then you look at the pick and roll side of it he's not great in the pick and roll right he's great when he gets the iso he gets the pick and roll that's why he switches a lot to get the mismatches he wants and is able to get to the uh, to the rim um, but when he has to actually run the set the efficiency plummets when jalen does it it's not the greatest in the NBA, but it's pretty average. And um, when he's average, it's better for our team than when it plummets. So for Jalen Green and for coaching, uh, for Coach Silas and the coaching staff, get that kid the ball more. We need more Jalen running the point guard position. We need more Jalen on ball. I don't care if he's the only one out there uh, by himself, uh, ball handling. I've seen them try to trot out lineups with Eric Gordon as the main guard and like four non, non ball handlers. So I know they can do it with Jalen. Right. Because he can't be much worse uh, than uh, Eric Gordon. So, you know, the comments about, oh, he needs Eric Gordon. He needs Tate uh, or not Tate. He needs Knicks to play with him. Let's throw those in the trash. Let's throw those comments in the trash. Let's bring Jalen the ball. I need him to touch the ball as much as possible and cultivate something that we're seeing between him and the guys on the team, between him and Al P, between him and KJ, between him and Kevin Porter as an off ball guard. So to me, that's not a coincidence that we're playing better. In the last five games, you could see that the duties of ball handling and playmaking have been split pretty much down the middle. 
The next player we're gonna talk about, obviously, is Alperen Shangun and his dominant play as of late. So Alp has been, you know, he's been pretty steady all season, and you know, there have been a lot of different, um, you know, complaints that people have about things like, you know, his defense is this and this and that. Um, but you know, that really is not apparent. You know, if you go look at it, uh, when it comes to um, one of the things that he gets a lot of crap on is his pick and roll uh, defense. That pick and roll defense. Go look at NBA.com and, and all, all the centers around the league and go look at the ones that are bad. Right now, Al P is a better quote-unquote pick-and-roll defender than Capella and Joel Embiid. Now you're going to ask like, what? Yes. Per the numbers, yes, he's a better. The, but those players, and including him, are all at the bottom of the NBA. I think there's like 20-something centers in that list, like 28 or something like that, that actually meet the criteria to get that stat generated for uh, pick-and-roll um pick and roll big man um and on the defensive side uh he's like 20 out of 28 and on the lower end for him is like guys like i said mb capella and all these other great defenders and this goes to show that pick and roll is not a individual defense the big man is rarely rarely the main issue in a pick and roll defense when you're playing um pick and roll because the main thing in a pick and roll defense is the team defense that comes with it. If you're going to defend the pick and roll, it's a team concept. It's one of the, probably the most team oriented defensive um, play style that you have to have because it depends on so many other people uh, on the court making the right decisions. And if even if you have a dominant big that plays the drop, especially, and that's one thing that LP has in common with Embiid, that he has in common with Capella, he has in common with uh, Okonwu from Atlanta, another it's not about the, really the players, about the scheme. And these are drop bigs. If you're playing the drop on a bad defensive team like Atlanta is, like Philly is, then you're going to suffer. And so the issues that are harped on for Alp's defense are really the Rockets' defensive issues, not his. So, you know, that, that was always kind of cap. Um, and if you understand how to read the pick and roll defense, the main issue there was always the help side uh, for him. And you could see that. It was always the help side defense. Uh, for that now there's some teams like the warriors that you never kind of want to leave a, a drop big on that you'd rather just go small yeah that's cool and i said that in the other video if you're playing the warriors then yeah if you're playing dame then you might not want to play the drop if you're playing guys that are like that there's not a lot of guys like that in the nba but if there are guys that are like that and they run the actions to take advantage of the drop then go small go jabari at five go uh, garuba at five but you know most teams, you can defend the pick and roll using a drop. And we've seen stretches of games where he's perfectly fine with certain lineups out there because they're able to communicate and play well. So that was always cap. But looking at some of the things, this guy's coming off a, a dominant game against OKC, 21 and 17, was just mean, was just bullying everybody, a team that likes to play small and he punished them. And on the inverse side of that, a lot of people say, well, they don't have a big man. Well. If you don't have a big man, you know what small teams usually do is play the big man off the court, but they weren't able to play LP off the court because he's a fairly good defender and he's smart. And if he's not going against Steph Curry or all these superstars that people expect him to be able to just shut down by himself, he looks okay, right? So, you know, once again, I think people are expecting way too much from a 19 year old, but let's look at some of the things he does well, right? In isolation, LP is generating 1.9 points per possession. Um, you know, NBA.com only has them listed as 10 possessions, which is the minimum that they'll generate for that for that category. But that leads the NBA, right? He has the highest uh, possessions uh, as far as uh, isolation possessions. Uh, when we're talking about isolation, I'm sorry. So, you know, what are we talking about here? You know, what are we talking about when we're talking about a guy that's leading the NBA in, in that stat? And when you look at his post up, you know, he's one of the top 20 post-up players in the NBA as a 19 year old, right? He's in the mix up there with Kevin Durant and Joe Kitch and all these other guys as a 19 year old. So, you know, some of the things we're seeing uh, when he dominates like this, people take it for granted. There's no way you could finesse these types of stats in the NBA. This is a man's league. Yes, he has his, short, his shortcomings. Yes, he has his weaknesses, but you can't finesse 21 and 17 just by showing up you can't finesse having a seven block game you can't finesse averaging 15 and 9 when you've played milwaukee and phoenix and golden state and all these powerhouses and dallas and etc cetera, etc cetera. you can't finesse those numbers 
on the efficiency that he has for a big man. So, you know, I think that people need to be able to take that into consideration. And let's stop looking at all the things that a lot of these guys can't do and look at what they can do. Just like with Jabari, people complain he can't dribble, he can't dribble. I mean, the dude is 6'11". He's making these shots. His shots are starting to come. He is defending at a high level now, one through five, you know, getting all the boards that he can get his hands on. You know, they said the same thing about KJ from last year. Oh, he can't dribble. All he does is dunk. You know, just reducing players to what their weaknesses are. And I just don't feel like that's a good way to look at basketball. Like, the game is so diverse. Everybody doesn't have to look like James Harden or Paolo Bancaro or or whoever you you're, or Steph or LeBron. Everybody doesn't have to look like look like that. You have to see what guys are good at. What I always say is be a champion in your role. And for me, we have such a diverse team of players with different skill sets and talents. And the coaches just have to keep working to make them work together and fit like a big puzzle piece. And I think those guys are doing a good job doing that. I'll give the coaching staff some kudos. Coach Silas has been doing a damn good job on the rotations. You know, I'll call the spade a spade. We give him a lot of grief for some of the head scratchers, but he's been doing a damn good job on the rotations. And I hope that keeps up because to me, that's the main reason. He's playing the guys when they need to be played. He's pulling guys when they need to be pulled. And he's riding the hot hand with guys like Garrison Matthews. He's sprinkling in a little bit of Jake up here. You know, the Knicks thing at this point, who else other than Knicks would be a viable option as a backup point guard? I think that's more of a stone issue. So when I see Knicks, I see stone. I don't talk about Silas because who else is he gonna put back there? He doesn't have anybody, right? So, you know, these next few games are going to be very important. I'm going to be watching to see, do these trends continue? And I want you guys to pay attention. Is Jalen getting to handle the ball more? That's one thing you want to see. Number two, is Al P getting his touches and his offense flowing through him on the second team? Because that's really where he does a lot of his damage with Eric Gordon. Uh, him and Eric Gordon have a nice little kind of thing going on there. And then the third thing I want you to look at is the rotations. Are there any head scratchers? Or if they are, are they limited? If those things continue, the Rockets are gonna be playing more competitive ball. Not saying they're gonna win all these games, but they're gonna be more competitive. So keep an eye on, uh, keep an eye out for those things in the next few games um, as they come on. And we'll keep talking about them, keep pointing out these great things. Now, of course, I want you guys to let me know what you think. I know some of you may not agree with me. Some may agree. Let me know in the comments. You know I will argue with you in the comments. So don't be shy. Uh, let it let it fly and let me know what you think about it. And of course, you already know what I'm about to say. You got to keep rocking with the Chop Shop. If you haven't subscribed, you're a loser. You're wasting your life. You're not um, doing what you're supposed to do as a basketball fan. So hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button on this video. And keep rocking with us as we keep dropping this heat.